Welcome back to Makeup and Mondo. I promise you, this is my favorite show ever. <laughs> I'm Paula. I'm excited. I'm Brittany, and this is all about us explaining Mandalorian badly while we do our makeup equally as badly. <laughs> 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 and this week we are going to be covering I, I looked it up this time fans it's not episodes it's chapter 14 and chapter 15 so we're leading up into the finale uh which is ne the next episode it's come out if you're we're recording on Friday so it's already out if you've had a chance to watch the finale however we have we have not in preparation for explaining badly chapter 14 and chapter 15. So, with that said, yeah. I'm going for a I have to get out of the house as soon as this done look. So, no <laughs> glam for me. <laughs> Just a regular schmegular. <laughs> How about you, Paula? What are you going for? Um, I am going for everybody's glam, but my subtle, which is always uh, a brown beige look. It's my... It's my signature look, and you know, as usual, sorry guys, I have to put you down a little bit. Ah! The, the <laughs> magic, the magic. Um, I always think every episode that I am ready, that I have everything in front of me. Always something in the background behind my computer. <laughs> <sighs> it's all good because I'm starting with my moisturizer. This is my Vino positively radiant. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. So, see, I do use drugstore products. I don't always use uh, super expensive -y stuff. But it's actually, some of it's not super good. Anyway, here, neither here, neither there. We're starting with chapter 14. So, we have just <laughs> left. Asaka, who has said, this is my, my uh, uh, sunscreen, which usually I put it first, but I'm completely backwards today. Mine is a moisturizer slash sunscreen. This Prime. has uh, SPF 15, but this is SPF 40, so just a little extra because, you know, the sun still happens. No matter if it's winter. No matter if it's uh, cloudy. And then also, I wish I had wore a... a not so tight crew neck so I can get my decolletage. I taught my daughter that. And she thought she loves to go forehead, cheeks, nose, mouth, chin, neck, decolletage. <laughs> it's just cute. I, uh, oh, so, so chapter four, fifth, 14, 14, 14. We have just left Asaka Tano who has told Mando, if you go to this place and let him sit up there, let baby Grogu, Grogu, baby Grogu sit up there. I was going to say baby Yoda and it just all mushed together. Uh, baby goo. Yeah. I just also realized I didn't put any serum, any of my serums on. So I'm not going to do that today. We're just going to skip that stuff. This is an easy peasy. I got to get out the house look today. Um, so anywho, go to the site. If there's other Jedi, because you got to remember folks. Brittany, that this is after uh, uh, Darth Vader has turned, Anakin has turned, and they gave off Order 66, which was kill all the Jedi, so all the clone bots, clone bots, <laughs> is that a thing? Anyway, all of them were told this, to kill off the Jedi, so that's where we are. There are very few Jedi left. That's why Asaka sends them over to this site, if there are Jedi. Now, we know... You, you and me and us and them. These are no spoilers here. But uh, oh, there are spoilers. I, I, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. There will be spoilers for episode 14 and 15. But no no further than that. Spoiler, 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 spoiler. It says so in the comments down below. Okay. So we know that there are, there are still other Jedi. Such as Yoda. Such as Obi-Wan. Such as... Well, now we know it's Sakatana. But there are other Jedi out there in the Jedi-verse. <laughs> so, so um, we don't know who's supposed to come. In episode 14, they go to this ancient site. Which is, it's, it kind of looks like uh, Stonehenge. A little bit. A little bit. And it's up. 
and I'm going to be honest, you know, I love how they shot it. But at the same time, with those hills, uh, they were moving kind of fast. And uh, maybe maybe, J maybe Mando was using his little jetpack. Anyway, so while they're sitting up there, while he's, he's taking the little baby Grogu, puts him on the little thing, and Grogu immediately goes, boom, and space forced out. Force, space force. Did I just say space force? He's forced out. So he goes, hey. <laughs> uh, and while yeah, that's happening, another ship has landed and mando tries to get baby grogu to come with him but he gets knocked back by the force He's like well you stay here do what you do do the thing you do i'm gonna see what's happening and we have a couple of hoaxes yeah i can a very familiar forgot. ship as well a very familiar ship I forgot who the chick was who's actually Mulan. She was the voice of Mulan in Disney's Mulan movie. She's also a, like a super cool sci-fi. She's in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well. So she is, but that's not her character. Her character over here. She I was also um, Chun-Li in the Street Fighter movies. Yeah, she, I love her. I love her as an actress, even though I can't remember her name or the character that she's currently playing. I think last time we saw her, she was not in a good place. And now she's got her little droid stuff in and she's better now. But she is helping. Bum, ba, da, bum. Do, 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 do. Yep. Now, for those of us not keeping up with what's happening in the Star Wars places at this moment, last we saw Boba Fett in this particular timeline, he fell into what I can only describe to you was Jar Jar's stomach. Now, let me rewind. I explained this on the other thing. I'm going to explain it over here. When I was little and saw Star Wars, and this is before George Lucas went back and added stuff and made things where, where, where Jar Jar could move, Jar Jar didn't move. He was a stationary blob. And so in his stationary blobness, they have these, these pits with these teeth in the outside. And the only way my people could explain to me what was happening is that, oh, that's just his stomach. And I just took it as that was, that was, am I calling him Jar Jar? What, what's his name? His name is not Jar Jar. Jabba. Jabba. Jar Jar. I was Thank wondering. you so much for catching up to me. Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> We're Jabba all, the Hutt. I, I was seeing where this was going. <laughs> so, last and time we like, saw Bob, there was the very unfortunate incident of his death. He got knocked over and fell into the little, little hole in the wall. So, we, there was no expectation for Boba to come back from that particular, that's like what, episode seven, eight, nine, seven, no, not nine, seven, eight, anyway, it's over there somewhere. No expectation for him to come back. He shouldn't have come back. He's back. And not only that, the reason he's back is because Mando, several episodes earlier, several chapters before, has his armor. And he tells him, I want my armor. And Mando, in his very Mando way, says, are you Mandalorian? And Boba oh. says, no, we answer to no one. It was my father's, and we answer to no one. And, and so that and was... A very he's been okay. like that consistently throughout this his character has been very neutral and he's been a bounty he's a bounty hunter which i feel like all of the a lot of the mandalorians have done and so he's been like that very neutral he's been switzerland um it, well well he's definitely been i'm here for the i'm here for the thing that i'm here for whatever the here for thing is whatever motivates and, me right yeah, it's, it's his personal motivation and so amando in his very mando way says uh friend uh this is this armor is only man this is mandalorian armor uh and it's only for mandalorians and you ain't getting it back and that ensues and they probably would have gone into a much deeper battle except they had more company show up Oh, but let's just let's just give a shout out to our I keep hitting my mic. Um, it's brand new. Uh let's just give a shout out to our Maori 
brothers and sisters and he was um he has uh that's who plays boba fett i cannot remember his name and i, I was gonna remember for this i was too um i was gonna get to the that but shout oh, out I'm sorry <laughs> I love to see indigenous. Well, you know what? On that screen at that moment, there were what one, two actors, three. Act it's Kool Aid, an actor of color. Yeah, Pedro. Yeah. So at that moment, you have in this major series three actors of color, which was which is a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. I mean, even if you don't see him, but we'll see him later. We'll talk about that. So anyway, the Empire shows up because they have a tracking device. Mando tries all he could do. Don't bite it. Why is my thing buzzing? Tries all he can do to uh, to to get little Grogu away. He is forced out, man. He is like, and there's a whole shield, and no one can mess with. Him. He's like a beacon, beaconing other Jedi's. Doink, 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 doink. So I then, found out that he's not only beaconing Jedi's, but anybody who is force sensitive, including Siths. He is beginning out, so that could just floodgates. Yeah, so we could see Darth. We could see uh 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 old Stinky What's his face? I forget Stinky What's his face. Um uh uh Sith Lord. It, anyway, oh, anyway. Um, so, I don't know. Palpatine. You know yes, 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 yes. So anywho, he's beginning out, bing, 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 and poor Mando tries everything he can. To get them off. Can't get them off. They fight off. It was a really beautiful little battle scene. Off all the star of the stormtroopers. They fight off the stormtroopers. The stormtroopers come back. And then. Bum, 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 the force sensitive droids have been have urged. And they actually broke it. So, oh, 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 oh. And then in the meantime, in between time, in the little bit, the little bit, in the bit of the little bit. What's on your face? It's mascara. Oh, okay. I was like, is this a new look? No. Are we doing freckles? freckles. <laughs> so, uh, he gets yeah. his, his armor back. He becomes the bad mamma jamma that he is. And, and the, the force sensitive droid, droids go get baby Grogu. He followed for a little bit in his very cool ship and notices it's the Empire. He's like, dude, it's the Empire. Um, and Mando says, back, don't let them hurt the baby. Don't hurt my baby. Don't hurt my baby. So, they, he agrees to help because he has held his armor. And then at the end, you get the real tie-in for how the Fets tie, or how the Fets are connected to the Mandalorians. Uh, Boba's father, I was about to call him Jar Jar, but that's not his name either, or Jabba, is another J. Is everyone Jar Jar Jango Fett? Jango, thank you. No, it, <laughs> Everyone's you know? Jar Jar I today. I just say, I know good at names. You know, um, we were in our last episode, um, or chapter, <laughs> just kidding, um, we were talking, uh, like, I'm like, and this lady, and this dude, and that dude, and this, and then we had to clarify our pronouns for people, so it's like, I know the main people, the only person that I really am concerned about is Mando and Grogu. Well, let's be honest. Mando's just a side of you're really about baby Grogu. <laughs> Which, you know, I, I, let me finish up my little episode synopsis here. We get the information, we get the, we get how Boba and Django are all tied into the Mandalorian. So we actually know now, oh, those are, those are a thing. We actually know now that yes, Django was Mandalorian. And yes, he was not Mandalorian. So that was a uh, that was a uh, uh, he a was a foundling for the canon. Uh, he was a foundling too. Yeah, he yeah clarification for for the canon for the universe for all of that good. Stuff. And at the end, we see Baby Grogu's met up with Giancarlo. I love him as an actor. I hate him in this movie, in this episode. He's like, just let him. They're like, 
trying to jump in as as Grogu's like forcing all doing the force on all the force choking him and knocking him around. He said, just let him tire himself out because he's a baby and he's using the force is tiring. Is that a yeah, so and he, they feel, he so gets tired, they when, handcuff him, and he says, we've got the asset, and they, they drive off. So let me tell you something that I feel about Moff Gideon, and this is something I finally, you can come at me in the comments, whatever. Um, He's a pick-me girl. He's a pick-me dude. I don't know. And um, it's somebody who's, like, does too much to be accepted. You know what I mean? Like, I guess that's not about it. I'm a pick me girl sometimes. Um, but oh, like pick me, me pick me, 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 me oh, right? Okay, I get it now. I've never heard. That. I was so when he walks into the chamber, he's so excited to see Baby Grogu's powers. Right? He's like, yes, oh, yeah. and he knows that Mister Little Baby Grogu is very upset, and that's what he's excited about. Is that it's coming from a place of rage. Oh, that he's hurting okay. people. Oh. That not only is he force sensitive, but he feel what is the quote? What is the quote? I don't want to mess it up. Ah. You gotta get Anakin some quote. start with the Anakin. With, um, with great uh with great powers come great responsibility. No, the rage one. Oh my gosh. Oh, rage. Guys, no, no, no. Uh, connection uh, 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 connection leads to feelings. Feelings lead to anger. Anger leads to rage. Rage leads to Sith or something like that. Right. Yeah, that one. Um, the And so that's what he's excited about. But if you take note when he walks in, his armor is very similar to Darth Vader's armor. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, wait. We're going to get demonetized. Okay, continue on. Oh, so yeah. that's the end of chapter 14 and a great place to segue into chapter 15. Paula, go. Okay. So, Mr. Well, we, we have the cutest handcuffs in the world, you know, because they're the because they're for him, Mr. Little Grogu. Oh, and God. so um child handcuffs mm -hmm. are never cute. <laughs> Girl, this is not the first time it off. Handcuffs. Oh, I feel very, very um, sorry. go ahead. This might be political, but imprisoning children is never a good idea. Oh, sorry, okay, let's go back to Star Wars universe. Don't imprison children, guys. Um, so little Grogu is lost in the universe, and it seems like there's no hope. And I am completely blanking on the start of the chapter 15 so i'm gonna mando, help my at the, end have... of, oh, at the end of chapter 14 mando goes back to cara Dune. oh there we go there cara Dune. Okay. I, and, and then that, he comes in so that you can transition continue no worries um so cara Dune is all freaking legit now is a, a we, we call like, her we call them all marshals <laughs> she, has a, she has the legit marshal her title is marshal marshal cara Dune, right Yes. And so he goes back for her help and he's we are wow, these are huge. Look at those. Cool. If in doubt, just add humongous lashes. Um, so he's back at Car he's back at Navarro, right? Caradoon. Mm-hmm. And um he asks her to spring a prisoner, which we saw in episode or in um season one. And I don't remember his name. I, we, I don't remember Bill his Burr. name. We'll call him Bill. Yeah. Bill. That is Bill Burr. I love his. He's a comedian, right? Yep. I love his comedy. Um, So Bill Burr is back. And he's getting sprung out of prison. And they go and they do it. I thought that was so. I was like, it is way too easy for them to spring somebody out of an empire prison, you know, or, or out of a republic prison. Sorry. Well, well, because she is part of the 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 thing, she can the orders. She's right. part of the system. She's part of the system now. Uh, <laughs> so it's pretty, yeah. it pretty easy. And then I love his little so I let's just say that Mando is becoming softer. He wasn't touchy. He was not warm. 
at all. And in the beginning of chapter 14, he actually chuckles and plays with um, Grogu a little bit with the Force. And then he goes into Cara Dune and he's like, so I never knew you'd go legit and like kind of makes pokes fun at her. Um, but his burliness and his surliness is just what is so great about his character. Anyways, um, back to uh, where I was at. Um, Cara Dune, Bill Burr uh, walks up to the ship and he's like, hey, you look a lot like someone I used to know to um, Boba Fett. And then Mando comes in, comedy, and it's like, ah, oh, I'd rather stay here than go with you. What do you have me going to do, right? Well, they need to find, they need to get information on where Grogu is. So they're going to go, I don't know the planet. Do you, did we figure I, that out? We don't know. We don't know what the planet is, but it's some sort of empire outpost mining colony situation. Which is right. why they needed Bill Burr because he uh, knows he was he was a stormtrooper. That's why they specifically need him because he the ins and outs and and what to do and all of that. And they don't because you know unless you're part of the unless you're part of the empire you don't know because he was but because he was part of the empire that's why he knows how to he knows his codes and all that stuff. So then they're um, pretending to be stormtroopers. And this is the first time that Mando takes off his, he doesn't show his face, but he takes off his helmet for, to get into the stormtrooper uh, uniform. And he's not happy about it, but it's, I think it's hilarious because he's like, ugh, this sucks. <laughs> and then there's a and whole conversation. Yeah, and that's exactly what I think that's going to, I want to try to deep dive into that because I have thought of the same thing too. Because the last episode, or our last discussion, we were talking about what's the Republic, what's the New Republic, is there even a rebellion anymore, and what's the Empire, right? You have four different, in my mind, might be wrong, um, you have four different groups fighting for power over the universe, right? And so first, Bill asked Mando, like, is it that you can't take off your helmet or is it that you can't show your face? Yeah. What are your thoughts you, on that? If They're you different go back, things. well, he's got to take off his helmet at some point. The boy's got mm -hmm. eight. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll see a little bit later. But uh, if you remember back, and I think it was season one, when he first has the kit, he goes to someone's house and they said, let, let me feed you. And they present all the food and then she said, I will go because I know you're not supposed to be seen. Yeah. That's from way, way back. So we know that he takes off his helmet. We know that he um, right. does that periodically. I mean... Because my, my my initial thoughts were, is it a pack of dreadlocks under there? Does he have to clean shave it? Uh, yeah, so we know he takes his helmet off. Uh, we know the other Mandalorians take their helmet off. So there is something in their religion, if you will, about not being seen or the just being a being. <laughs> right. Um, so, the, yeah, the whole conversation, I think, was I didn't anticipate it to be we're getting ready to see things happen. Um, mm -hmm. But it was setting up that uh, internal conflict for Mando because I literally was triggered for him in the whole next thing. When right. He and, and well, you also come in the, the conversation with bo -Katan about the beliefs behind taking off your helmet because he thought he found his people, and he did, they're Mandalorians, but they're a different sect or um, tribe, as you might say. And so they, she explains to them that foundlings are the ones who aren't supposed to remove their helmets or that that belief is around that. And a lot of the... A lot of this is just setting it, a lot of it, and it started back with Bo Katan. And even before that, I think um, that he was going to take off his helmet eventually. And he, we do see him do it in season one. And 
I'm so fascinated by this because Mondo is like, this is a creed. This is this is the way, right? I don't it's remove religion. my helmet. Right, it's religion. And he starts to soften up on that as he starts to learn a little bit more about himself. And he, okay, so I'm going to go... I'm going to dissect a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. So my favorite character in The Last Airbender is Zuko. And I can I can talk like ages about this, but just it's because he's going through a personal transformation. And I feel like Mando is going through this transformation as well. And it's such a fascinating human aspect to somebody who was like super, super Mandalorian right and that humanity shines through um does that make sense or am i am i in uh another am i on another planet other than navarro <laughs> Just kidding. No. and i'll tell you what it's akin to if you grew up in a very conservative um christian home that, and, and i talk about this because this is what i know uh that that says certain things are sins and certain things are bad. And then you grow up and you start meeting different people who with different beliefs. It's not that you give up that belief of certain sins or certain things are bad. And, and, and it's right. that you have a different understanding about where people are because people aren't all raised the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, is people don't all have the same baseline of this is wrong. People actually have different things of mm -hmm. this is wrong. So yes, I there yeah. are other ways. There are other ways of doing. Yeah, there are thing. other ways of doing things. There are other ways, uh, and then, and and some things, particularly for Christians. I, I was watching this on Fiddler on the Roof. It's like we say that these are sins or these are wrong, but some of them are not necessarily the sin part of it some of them are just issues so and then some things are just social issues but if you have for example and and i've seen this happen with different folks for 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 an for an example uh it may be controversial so let me just go with me here if you have been raised all your life to know that um homosexuality is a sin Mm -hmm. And then you have a child who is homosexual. There is a reckoning that happens within that person, whether they go all the way over to, and, and I don't, I, I am, and I do want to insert that I am neither homosexual, nor do I have homosexual children. I know of they're two and four. They don't know yet. So, but what I do know is that, and what I've seen with some of my friends and some other parents is that they have this instant of uh, instance of how do I reconcile the two? And I see Mando going through something similar-ish. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is the belief, but I need to do something. I need to take care of my kid. And that leads us to this next particular situation. Right. Which is, um, we go to, they're on their way. To, or So they're having the conversation. And then they have the conversation, which also is the four, the four different branches of control or trying to control. And he's saying, Bill is saying, well, how is the new Republic any different from the empire? We're all trying to control and we all have people who to control and people not to control. Right. Yeah, like it, it, these people living in this particular colony, they don't know if you're empire. They don't know if you're Republic. They don't know if you're new Republic. They don't know if you're order first order. All they know is that y'all are jacking up their life. Right. And you're interfering. So then they go through this whole thing and they fight these ugly monsters with very whatever. I the, the I, fight. That part is like, I, okay. <laughs> and, you know, no, no, they're, they're the people that are on that planet that the empire is jacking up they are locals yeah. you know like i mean pirate or not they're locals trying to survive yeah they're trying to yeah and and that's what that whole i it's so funny that bill brought that up because i was thinking the same thing they were the indians because in the new world 
You said it. <laughs> they were the indigenous people whose land were being raided. Who were being war. colonized. They're the indigenous people whose land were being colonized. I, I, I totally saw that and totally got that. <laughs> right. And if you and if you truly, if you truly um want to go there, and we've said this time and time again, Mandalorian is a western. Dun dun dun. Yeah, so that's why I was going and, to using their word ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, but go ahead. So the three person standoff in the um in your chapter, chapter 14, actually was an homage to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Who was ugly? <laughs> the Empire. <laughs> so Mando was the good, Boba was the bad, and you know the Empire is ugly. Uh wait, you didn't include me and ancient men from from <laughs> the girl, the girl, the sharpshooter. The sharpshooter's the bad with Boba. She's an extension of him right now because she owes her life to him. Oh. I know. Okay. Problematic. I'm down, I'm down with that. I know. She's in debt to him. Um, anyways, back to the blah, blah. so they're going in, and he's like, Well, you never thought you'd be happy to see a stormtrooper. And I was like, Wow. <laughs> Boom. Well, they, they were being chased by the indigenous people who were trying to blow up their their car, their car, and out of the four things that were carrying the resources that were highly explodable, uh, they were the only one that made it. Let's right. add that in because, yes, they were very happy to see stormtroopers because that meant they made it. And they were. And of course older. the Empire is going to use something that's very unstable to stabilize their ships. Oh, sorry. Um. <laughs> I mean, uranium. <laughs> Exactly, guys. Come on. Yeah. They got all these ideas from the colonization of Native Americans and uh, indigenous tribes all across the world. They know this script. And so they go in and the guy's like, you guys are awesome. First of all, I don't think I've ever seen a stormtrooper. I would have, red flags would have gone everywhere because I've never seen a stormtrooper do what Mando did. And as a, like, a general or whatever, um, I would be like, why did you guys fight so hard for this stuff? Why didn't you just die? Because stormtroopers are so expendable. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, in the in the universe, because we're not on their side, too. That's the other piece. If you're coming from it from right. a storyteller perspective, mm -hmm. we don't get to see storm. We don't see stormtroopers as human beings. We see stormtroop. We don't humanize them because mm -mm. they clunk their head, clink up, and then they shoot badly and die. That's literally almost all what stormtroopers do in any of the movies. So we're not used to and seeing all, people. I might just uh, shoot myself in the foot because I consistently humanize um, stormtroopers. <laughs> Anyways, because then you get this really human telling of a battle that happened right if you remember the battle i don't remember tell us in the comments and he's talking about how well they still won but then bill's character lost a bunch of people a lost a lot of his comprades in battle they and he did. the empire sacrificed his right. regiment mm -hmm. so he, that's one of the reasons he um he is a little bitter is that right. he knows that they were sacrificed, that they yeah. were sent literally to die. That and this man is like, well, let's give homage to these people as if they weren't just an expendable sacrifice to he him. He was one of the commanders who made the decision. That was the other piece right. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bill. That's why, that's why specifically this guy, Bill, was like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I love that part. And like, it's like I said, it humanizes the people who are fighting for the empire, right? And in this glimpse, this little window of time. And um, so he goes and he shoots him. I was so excited. I was happy, but I was like, you compromised the, the mission. You um, just they lost still... over the biggest part of that piece, though. What? The biggest part of that uh, oh. interaction. You just completely skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I guess I'm sort of desensitized about Mando taking off his helmet because of season one. So the biggest reveal of that whole thing. Go ahead, Brittany. 
Go ahead. Okay. Um, Mando takes off his helmet in a room full of people because he has to um get the information that he needs. And this is on the this is this is on the side of I am going to protect this child and I am going to go out of my way re break religious this is the way things to find my child. Not only that and this is the part that was triggering. It wasn't like it was a Remove it. Let's get it and put it back. It was remove it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we're done. And then, hey, you come over here. It's like and he has to keep it off the whole time. Right. Drink with me. And he has to keep it off the whole time. And then Bill comes. And he has to keep it the whole time. I was legitimately for him triggered. I was like, I was like, this is this really long time that he's. I mean, it's one thing to just take it off, do the thing, and put it back on. He had to take it off and keep it off. For a while. A really long time. I was, yeah, that triggered me. Um, so I was literally and panting and caught myself panting as I was like. That's yeah. what, so what's so I funny not is, is that the, the, juxta, the juxtaposition of you and me, right? I'm and, over here talking about the humanization in Bill Burr's character, what he's going through, already desensitized to what Mando's going through because he's having a whole internal thing. Of, but the, the, yeah, I know that internal struggle of this isn't right, but I need to do this. But this is right, but I'm going to do this. Right. Felt that so deeply. I felt that so, I don't know why, if it was the conversation in the car ahead of time, if it was just that kind of, just, just, you know, I don't know exactly what it was that triggered me about it, but it was like that we, we have been built uh, in part is that build up of he doesn't take it off. He doesn't take it off. He doesn't take it off. This is not the way. And then not to take it off he takes it off and leaves it off I, it was minutes it was minutes it wasn't just like you know it was it was a, it was a long time mm -hmm. so triggered i'm so triggered by it it's so funny i don't know i mean it was a significant thing and i think it's just that um for me the intense feeling of what Bill Burr's character was going through kind of triggered me mm. in the sense that we, in the sense that, you know, I have consistently humanized the stormtroopers because they have families, they're people too, you know, and we make fun of their shooting and stuff, but it was like this deep moment of him like going from, I fought for you. I put my life on the line, and this is how you nonchalantly treat my comrades, and you sacrifice and him. It. And him. He was, because he was, not only was he there, he was one of the few that escaped, mm -hmm. and he was part of that sacrifice, yeah. And I was going through that whole situation about how tragic it feels when, like, yeah, and yeah, Mando took it off, and the moment he took it off, I was, like, almost relieved. I'm so claustrophobic. <laughs> so, him having the helmet, like, it's like Bill Burr's character. He goes, I don't know how you guys do this. <laughs> and he takes it off. And I'm not making fun of Mando, because I really respect him. But he's going to, and almost, it's almost as if I totally understand the sacrifices that he has to make because of his feelings for Grogu. You know, like almost, oh, well, of course he's going to take his helmet off. Anyway, so let's finish because we got to get out of here. We got lives to live. And, um, and I, think, I can do this done? all day. Are you done? I'm done, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're done. I'm done. So we're going to finish it off with Bill starts a fight. They barely get out. <laughs> and Boba Fett to the rescue. And, they and, the and Paradoon and, and Sharpshooter. I can't remember her name. Um, all of them to the rescue. And they get out. But they have the information. They know where they're going with Grogu, which was the most important part. And then the end. Tell us about how you felt about Mando's. My question is, when did Mando record the message? 
I totally missed that. Was that part of his plugging in? Did wasn't it exchange? No, he was. Information? It was a. Uh, it was a uh, in real time. Okay. Okay. Change. All right. So I, he says. Go ahead. The child means more to me than you will ever know. And you just released Daddy Bear. You know what I mean? Like, I'm coming after you. If that did not send chills through your body, I don't know what will. But it was almost like, okay, yeah. It was like imprinting on Grogu right there. And Moff Gideon better be shaking in his wannabe uh, Darth Vader boots. Ooh, so I am, <laughs> what is the thing you are most excited to see in the next episode, which is the last episode for season two with the Mandalorian? What is the thing you're most interested to see? I'm most interested. I hope just want them to be in this episode. I want, so I have a feeling because of his little beacon thing, they're going to introduce a lot of overlapping characters that are in that universe because you're sending a beacon to the whole universe in star wars in this moment in time i'm looking forward to seeing who they're going to tease in and their announcements for spinoffs and i just want baby grogu to be back with mando and mando to be back with his grogu um i don't like it when things are lost so i'm excited i'm excited for that uh but i think they're gonna leave us on a cliffhanger and we're gonna have to wait so how about you? I think I think baby Grogu is going to get back with Mando, but I I am I am interested to see who was beaconed. If we're going to see Ewan McGregor come back, if we're going to see, uh, uh I was going to say Hans Christensen, but that's not his name. No, and, um, Anakin. Yeah, Anakin. I can't remember his name. Hans Christensen. Is yeah, it's like Hans Christensen Anderson. That's not right. Um, <laughs> we're going to see Hayden. Uh, Hayden Christensen. All these different uh, storylines. If we're going to see some of the Clone Wars folks that were missing slide into this, if if Yoda's going to come out and say, you know, that's just my baby daddy. That's just my baby daddy. No, I don't. But, because I don't know that there are any more baby Yodas. If they were all, if they were a whole planet of force sensitive people, hello, we don't know. So I am, I'm interested to see who that beacon beaconed. That's exactly who I am um, excited. That's exactly what I'm excited about. And something else. Ming. We have an opportunity for you guys to support the Misadventures channel with uh, the Native Humor Mugs. Look at there. Mine's dirty because I've been using it. But Native Humor is else. Uh, we have it in blue. And we have it in red. And uh, listeners get 20% off by using the code QUEEN B. That helps us <gasps> also track. <gasps> okay, mine does not have that. <laughs> It's just As a dark. little surprise for our listeners. So if yeah, so um yeah, you go to brickchillman.com slash merch. You can get you a set of mugs uh in blue, red, use the code Queen B. Those proceeds do come back to supporting the channel. So thank you guys so much for joining us with makeup and Mando. Wait, let's get our picture. <laughs> And thank you, thank you, thank you um, for listening. Please fill in any gaps that we missed down below in the comments. If we're calling, you know, Jar Jar Jabba the Hutt, Jar Jar Binks, Jango Fett, I mean, I don't know names. Let me know. Let me know what you're, what are you looking forward to in the last episode? Or what did you see? Spoilers. Or, put it down. or what would you like us to talk about in the thin finale? of the Mandalorian. Or any requests on makeup looks. Yes. Uh, that's going to be dedicated to one episode and it's going to be very long. <laughs> yeah. All this right. Is, I got to get out of the house look. So nothing, nothing fancy, nothing major, just keeping it simple. Even though my hair looks, my hair looks really greasy on camera, but it actually is really greasy and relaxed. Uh, uh, this is my, um, I'm going to do a subtle look, but boom, lashes. Boom. Right. 
Thank you guys. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.